Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I answered how long does it take to come off a ventilator or respirator in intensive care. You can read, watch or listen to the update if you click on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another one of our most frequently asked questions and the question this week is, after weaning off a ventilator, is it normal to be confused? If your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, chances are that your loved one has been on a ventilator or respirator for any period of time and normally what goes hand in hand with ventilation and a breathing tube is that your critically ill loved one is or was in an induced coma. Furthermore, what also goes hand in hand with your loved one being critically ill in intensive care is that you and your family have millions of questions and not all questions may get answered by the intensive care team in a fashion that you may be satisfied with. What usually also goes hand in hand if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care is that you and your family feel frustrated, fearful, stressed, overwhelmed, vulnerable and out of your comfort zone due to the lack of control, power and influence you are experiencing during this stressful and challenging time. Moreover, if your critically ill loved one has just been weaned off the ventilator and has come out of the induced coma, they may be confused. So, if that's the case, there's usually no need to panic as a prolonged induced coma and mechanical ventilation on a ventilator or respirator can cause confusion, agitation and non-cooperation. So let's shed some more light on the induced coma and ventilation and the side effects of it. As a rule of thumb, the longer your critically ill loved one is in an induced coma and on a ventilator or respirator, the higher chances are that your critically ill loved one will wake up, come out of the induced coma, gets taken off the ventilator and is confused, agitated and even uncooperative. The reasons can be manifold and are most likely to be found that during the induced coma, sedative drugs such as propofol or midazolam and also opiate drugs which are painkiller drugs such as morphine, fentanyl or ketamine are given. The combination of these drugs tend to be pretty heavy guns so to speak and they generally do a good job to keep your critically ill loved one comfortable on the ventilator or respirator. However, by the time your critically ill loved one is waking up and is coming out of the induced coma, the accumulation of those sedative and painkiller drugs can cause your loved one to be confused, agitated and non-cooperative. Furthermore, if your critically ill loved one has required prolonged surgery before the induced coma, and the intensive care admission, the likelihood of your critically ill loved one to be confused, agitated and non-cooperative is increased again. Also, if your critically ill loved one has had any major brain or head injury, the likelihood and risk for confusion, agitation and non-cooperation is increased once again. Another factor and contributor to confusion agitation and non-cooperation after your loved one has come out of the induced coma and has been taken off the ventilator or respirator is that if your loved one is or has been taking drugs and or is drinking lots of alcohol that the likelihood and risk of confusion, agitation and non-cooperation is increased due to the likely withdrawal from alcohol and or drugs that your loved one may have used or even misused before admission to intensive care. The other factor that's increasing the risk of your loved one being confused, agitated and non-cooperative 
after an induced coma and after the ventilator and the breathing tube have been removed is their age. Generally speaking, the, the older your critically ill loved one is, the higher the risk of your loved one that waking up is not straightforward. As a rule of thumb, and from my experience, in more than 15 years critical care nursing experience in three different countries, I would say that if your critically ill loved one is above the age of 70, that they have a higher risk of being confused, agitated and non-cooperative when coming out of the induced coma and when they are coming off the ventilator. If your critically ill loved one falls into the category and the age is above 70, they may be absolutely fine. And I'm only saying that age can be a factor for having difficulties in waking up. Moreover, what you also need to know is that some of the sedative and opiate drugs, which are the painkillers, such as midazolam, morphine and fentanyl, can make your critically ill loved one addicted. And the longer your critically ill loved one has been in an induced coma, the higher the risk and the likelihood that your critically ill loved one is going through a withdrawal when coming out of the induced coma. If your critically ill loved one is going through a withdrawal after the induced coma, your critically ill loved one is once again at a higher risk to be confused, agitated and non-cooperative. Last but not least, you may also want to know how long your critically ill loved one will be confused, agitated and non-cooperative after coming out of the induced coma and after coming off the ventilator. The answer, it depends. It depends on a number of factors including how stable or unstable your critically ill loved one is after coming off the ventilator and after coming out of the induced coma. The confusion, agitation and non-cooperation can last from a few days to one or even two weeks. Some patients may even leave intensive care when they are still confused, agitated and non-cooperative. I know it's easier said than done, but be patient. Sometimes the key to get through the challenge of having a loved one critically ill in intensive care is being patient. What's really key though is that you keep asking questions and that you take charge and take control of the situation in order to have control, power and influence. Because as you know by now it's pretty challenging seeing the intensive care team running the show and seeing your critically ill loved ones suffer. How can you leverage your level of power, influence and control whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You will get to that all-important feeling of control, power and influence when you download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you learn quickly how to get real power and real control and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Our free reports help you with in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up for your free membership and download your free Instant Impact Report now. In your free Instant Impact Report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Your Questions Answered and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. 
This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.